Wow, this is an abomination to Italian cuisine. Really sorry, Italians. But you've asked for it enough, so we're gonna make the proper. Okay, so today we're making the Papa John's Papadilla. Papa making papadillas? Wow, look at that. Is this like a third wall breakage thing? I, 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 don't, I don't think so. So I've never had a papadilla. But to me, it looks like it's just a pizza, uh, a, a mediocre one at that, folded in half. Like some sort of weird fangled calzone that somebody made when they didn't have any idea what a calzone was, but they just imagined it and they're like, oh. But maybe I'm being too harsh. So let's go taste test it and make this, shall we? Okay, no drive through today, so how are we gonna do our three-point system? I'm just gonna think about it. Papa John's, what does it look like? Let me paint a picture. There's a really sweaty guy outside, and he's very red. Good Lord. The building is oddly clean on the outside, but the inside is not. Just based off that painting, I'll give it a five out of 10. Menu, well, they have something called a papadilla, so we'll just go ahead and give that a zero. Just a zero. Thank you for calling Papa John's. All right, well, I've got you on hold. Let me ask you something. What's the best part of a slice of pizza? The answer is crust. I, I don't like, like this, Kendrick. You should not be liking this. How is there a wait right now? It's 107. All right, well, I've got you on hold. Let me ask you something. You already did this. All right, well, I've got you on hold. All right, well, I've got you on hold. I genuinely think they're just not going to pick up their phone. So as of right now, the service is a zero out of... 400,000. All right, we're gonna call a different Papa John's, Jesus Christ. Hi, uh, I'd like to place an order for delivery. Oh, okay, it looks like you're just right outside our delivery zone. You have a good day. You too, bye-bye. Let's have you list this order, because I don't want to order it anymore. Hi, hello, can I order two Papa Diaz for pickup? Okay, give me about 10 minutes. Okay. Why was that so much easier? Let's get a round of applause for you, Ulysses. Thank you, Ulysses. It's finally here, and it took a very long time. This is the ugliest box I've ever received from a restaurant company in my entire life. I've never seen one of these. <laughs> oh, the anticipation. Oh my God. This is just a small pizza folded in half. <laughs> Whole pepperoncini, appreciate that. That's good stuff. Whoa, spicy holy shit. Let's take a look inside. All right, regret doing that. Does this look like chicken to you, Vikram? That looks like Canadian bacon. That's ham. <sighs> bon appetit. It's not terrible, but it's literally just a folded mediocre pizza with microwave bacon. There are two onions on this entire sandwich. At this point, we're not even here to beat it. We're just here to actually make what the product was supposed to be. So we'll do that. We're going with a modified, less traditional sort of Neapolitan dough to make this a little easier because you're gonna fold the damn thing and low-key ruin it. Now, please do me a favor and use grams. Pizza is made with love and also science. In a large bowl, combine 800 grams of double O tipo flour. That's an Italian flour, but you could also use all-purpose and 16 grams of fine sea salt. No, oh, Josh, I don't wanna use the grams. These are all exact percentage parameters that I've created for you. So hush, Papa's got you. In a separate container, mix 515 grams of water at around 95 Fahrenheit with five grams of instant yeast. Once dissolved, pour that into your flour mix, mix that round to get a rough dough, then knead by hand in that bowl until you get a smooth and extensible dough, about three to five minutes. Generously grease a bowl, shape your dough into a light ball, plop it in there, cover it tightly with plastic wrap with a respectable and correct name, and rise at room temp for two hours, then pop it in the fridge overnight. Wow, movie magic, and it's the next day. Punch your dough down and separate into six even pieces, around 235 to 250 grams each. Now roll those pieces of dough into doit balls and place them in a proofing box or on a baking sheet generously coated with flour, spaced evenly apart, cover with a lid or another inverted baking sheet and proof for three to four hours at room temp. Now during those three hours, I'd highly recommend you get your barbecue sauce, creme fraiche ranch, your bacon and barbecue chicken ready. First barbecue sauce. In a medium saucepan, add three quarters of a cup or 127 grams of light brown sugar, three quarters of a cup or 168 grams of ketchup, a quarter teaspoon or half a gram of onion powder, one tablespoon or nine grams of smoked paprika, one tablespoon or 12 grams of Cholula, hot sauce, one tablespoon or 24 grams of molasses, one tablespoon or 15 grams of Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, that's kind of right. A quarter cup or 60 milliliters of white vinegar, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water, then give that a whisk and bring to a boil over a medium high heat. Reduce for one to two minutes, cut the heat, then season to taste with salt and two teaspoons or six grams of fresh ground black pepper. Finally, pass it through a fine mesh strainer to get it real smooth and that is your BBQ sauce. Right, everybody loves ranch, but it could be elevated with a little bit of 
In a medium sized bowl, add half a cup or 75 grams of paint. Huh, just kidding, please don't do that, all right? That's creme fraiche. Half a cup or 105 grams of mayonnaise, a quarter teaspoon or half a gram of onion powder, one tablespoon or two grams of fresh chopped dill, one tablespoon or two grams of thinly sliced chives, three cloves of grated garlic, season to taste of salt and pepper, and finally, a third cup or 80 milliliters of buttermilk, and then give that a nice till incorporated, and that is your greatest ranch with, of course, creme fraiche. Now for the chicken, it's as simple or complex as you want. You'll need four boneless, skinless chicken thighs, seasoned however you want. Salt and pepper is fine, but I added some of my Cajun spice. Then just grill those bad boys in a grill pan, gas grill, or even a yakitori grill if you've got one. Flip constantly just until cooked through and the internal temp registers 165 Fahrenheit. And well, that's it. You could call it done at this point, but I wanted these extra smoky. And I've got a secret for you that I've never shown on here before. This is compressed wood. If you want to buy some, there'll be a link in the description, but it is magical. So you'll need a deep or medium deep hotel pan, a shower shallow perforated hotel pan and a lid or foil to cover. Here's how to use it. Place a piece of foil in the shape of a janky looking sort of bowl in the bottom of your non perforated hotel pan. Add two to three one inch chunks of your compressed wood. Place that on one side of your pan, then preset your perforated pan on top of that. Now on the opposite side that the wood is placed, add your chicken on, then quickly lift your perforated pan and using a blowtorch, blaze that brother up until it is, well, completely on fire. And once it starts to smoke, place your perforated pan back on, cover with the lid or tightly wrap with foil and place in a ventilated area for 15 minutes. And when that opens, that chicken will emerge, tasting like it came straight out of a roaring applewood fire grill of a mountain man's cooking lodge. Now, once that's done, slice your chicken into third inch thick pieces and place it to the side. And yes, it's fine if it gets cold, it's gonna get heated when you bake it anyway. Now for the bacon, sure, you could just get store-bought pre-sliced bacon, cook it regular, you, you don't need me to explain that. But we're better than that. I got a whole fresh slab of smoked proper peppered bacon here, which I sliced into a total of eight ounces of three quarter inch cubes. Pop those beauties into a 12 inch cast iron pan, set it over medium heat, and cooked while constantly stirring until beautifully crisp and browned on all sides, and the inside is undeniably juicy. For the cheese mix, you're going to combine two cups or 162 grams of smoked gouda, two cups or 162 grams of Monterey Jack, and half a cup or 40 grams of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Toss that together, and it's a papadilla cheese. For baking your pizzas, I use my uni oven, preheated to 700 to 800 Fahrenheit. Don't worry, we have an oven version too. Just pop a pizza stone or a baking steel in your oven and preheat to the max oven temp for 45 minutes prior to baking. Also prior to baking, optionally, make a quick garlic sage butter by melting half a cup or 112 grams of salted butter until melted and hot over medium heat. Cut off the heat, then add three cloves of finely chopped garlic, four sage leaves, stir, and let that sit for five minutes. Okay, let's ship it a pizza. Sorry. Italians, I had to. Get a piece of dough, generously flour your work surface and your dough. Using your fist, punch out all of its hopes and dreams, leaving a quarter inch border all the way around the pizza, that's the crust. Then grab the dough, drape it over your fists, allowing gravity to pull it down and shimmy the dough around and around as to stretch it evenly till you get a 12 to 14 inch piece of dough. Once that's done, make sure the underside is appropriately floured so it slides off easily. Then first, sauce your pizza with barbecue sauce, probably about two to three tablespoons per pizza, spread evenly, then top with your cheese mixture. Be generous, but not uh, overzealous. Follow that with your bacon, then your chicken, just a touch more BBQ drizzled on top. Some very thinly sliced sweet onion and a light drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Then just take that there pie and launch it into your oven of choice. But wait, if it's in a proper pizza oven at 700 to 800 Fahrenheit, then bake for 25 seconds, turn it 180 degrees, and bake for another 25 seconds. Then immediately remove and that's it. You gotta love a pizza oven. Now if it's a home oven version, it'll take closer to four to seven minutes. Now it won't taste or look quite as traditional or dramatic, but it's still quite nice. Now as soon as that comes out of the oven, brush the crust lightly with garlic sage butter all around that dough crust, or crusty if you're speaking scientific terms, then all you gotta do is gaze into the beauty of this pizza that you made and then desecrate what you have blessed. Forsake it to the depths of hell by folding it in half to make the pee-pee, uh, sorry, I mean papa dia. Now, although the folding hurts my soul just a little, I think you can see which one might taste better, but there's only one way to determine that. Look at this. This is the papa dia. This is the fapa dia. Oh! First off, look at the aeration. The exterior has a crusty to it, right? Oh my God. This is so many miles ahead of this. It's almost like a completely different object. This is like the speaker turned on zero and this is the speaker turned all the way. The dough, perfectly cooked, chewy. It's got the perfect level of saltiness. The bacon itself, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like a gush, ushy gushy. The smoked chicken thigh, juicing. And of course, the perfectly umami. Umami? Barbecue sauce. We need a taste tester and it's gonna be Kendrick. Number one. Choo choo, na 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 na. Mm. Kendrick, number two. Are you ready? Which one did you prefer, one or two? Oh, one. 
one and done. Yours, uh, there was a lot more complexity to the flavors. Like, hey, the barbecue sauce like immediately just puts it over, yeah. like easy win. Right, so Papa John's Papadilla, they never really stood a chance. And as I've said many times, in this world, there's only room for one Papa. And his last name don't end with John's. It ends with, with Weissman. You wanna know what else says Papa's fat, plump dough tightly folded before your very eyes? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our papadilla. Maybe if we put a little bit of an inflection there, it might feel better. Even the version that I made felt like a disrespect to my own pizza when I folded it. The second I folded it, I was like, damn. But to be fair, I have been to places in Naples where they literally just make a quick marinara pizza. They fold it, put it in a newspaper, and you eat it, and it's magnificent. So maybe that's where the inspiration came here. I'm not really sure. But I will say that our version was significantly better, and even without all the fixings like the garlic butter, et cetera, it's still gonna be better. And that just goes to show that making a proper dough no. It takes time and it is worth that time. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. And when I say next time, I mean in another video, which is probably gonna be posted in like a few days, so keep your eyes open.